Hi, I'm Zaina Juliet. It's Zena, Juliet, and friends. Stay tuned for great conversation and music each week. And now, here's Zena. You're watching Zena, Juliet, and friends. And today I have a very special show. Two of America's greatest comedians. The audience are praising these two. We'll be right back after this. finance option turns out it's 29% interest. Oh, I know. Freaked me out. Then I realized I don't have to pay. It's not a car they can't repossess. <laughs> just wait until some guy show me, hey, you didn't pay your eye surgery. So what? Therapy, you can actually rewrite your inner dialogue to break bad habits or to create new ones. Tonight, I'm just going to tap into your creative potential and let you have some fun. Yes, the better you feel, higher and higher, lighter and lighter, higher and higher. Comedy Club. That's right. Jokester's Comedy Club. Located inside the showroom at the D Hotel and Casino. This is awesome! Seven nights a And we're back. I want to introduce you to these two amazing comedians. I have to say, <laughs> they make me laugh constantly, but all of you in Las Vegas know who they are, and if you don't, you will know. Right now with me today, <laughs> and they're looking at each other because they're laughing because they're making me laugh. Right now with me today, Kathleen Dunbar and Don Barnhart. That was such a great intro. I thought we were sitting in someone else's chair. <laughs> <laughs> Said, are we supposed to be here or are we next? Who's coming in? I know. I just have to say that um, there is so much to the both of you. It's probably going to take me several shows. Like, we going to have to get together again on this show because you are amazing. Kathleen, oh, I'll, I'm going to start you. with you. I am. I am. <laughs> She's amazing and she knows this. I'm going to start with you. You have done so much in Las Vegas. Um, your shows are phenomenal and I want the world to know you all need to come to Las Vegas to see Kathleen and Don in action, non-stop performing here in Las Vegas and around the world. Kathleen, tell us how did you get start started your start in comedy? Because I read um, some things on you and I think your story is interesting. Well, I was a I was a single mom. My son grew up, moved out. I didn't have nothing to do. I was always funny at work. And people said, you should go to this open mic. So I went to the open mic. And three weeks later, I was opening for Emo Phillips at a five-star comedy club. Yeah. I didn't have it, right? That was 1999. I was 20. OK, 20. I was 20. <laughs> you were 20. Um, <laughs> I'll go with it. Yeah. Wow, the fact that you went for it there you know? a second is quite the compliment. But, but when you said I was really uh, big in Vegas, I thought you meant all the weight I gained. I was no. going to. Um, no. I was a little offended by that. Too. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? I'm trying. I'm going to the gym. But uh, I was talking about all those big signs I saw of you in lights. 
Well, it's such a great <laughs> job. This is, is this not the best job in the whole world? Phenomenal. It Go out is. there and say whatever you want to say and get paid for it. It's yes. fantastic. Say and you're known you to be witty, funny, edgy, and hilarious. That would that's be what that's what they say about you. <laughs> you say almost anything you want to. Yes, almost. You say almost anything you want to. Yes. Yeah. There's a little political correctness now that people are a little tense, so we, we kind of yes. skip over politics. I do anyway. I don't think I don't. Really, I don't. Uh, you know. yeah. uh, I don't do politic jokes because uh, it's too, you get into a battle with people. Yes. You can't even tweet anything anymore. Yeah. If you tweet something, people start attacking. And everyone has a right to their own opinion. We're there to entertain, make you laugh, escape yes. for a little bit, giggle, yes. howl throw tomatoes, I don't care. But I think when you're at a comedy show, and I think when you're performing, I think all the seriousness should just go out the window. Thank you. We should Thank all you. unite, have fun, and let's just laugh. We can laugh at each other because when you are comedians, you guys laugh at yourselves. Absolutely. You can create jokes about yourselves, and I think that should be a place where we let loose and enjoy. I can you tell have you. have to say, you know it's yes. a joke. Yes. It was a joke. I was yeah. kidding. It was a joke. Yes, and that's what you hear. To see comedy, you shouldn't even have to say that word. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, well, I work at Jokesters a lot, and the crowds down there are wonderful. Yes. They seem to be a little bit more hip and, and, and get it. Yeah. Jokesters, I think. It's 1030 at night, so they're there for comedy. They didn't just wander in. Right. Uh, oh, there's a oh, joke. They're not hurdled. Yes. Right. Hurdled? Hurdled. 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 I kind of like hurdled. Hurdled. Yeah. We should go hurdle some people. <laughs> we the should go hurdle. You know. well, if you can make it over this hurdle, right. you get in yeah. for free. Yeah. Yes. Let's or, think about that. That's take a great an IQ marketing test. idea. They get in. You hurdled. Or it could be hurdled as in I hurdled my lunch. Right. Hurdled with laughter. That's a different word, too. In case you don't know, my friends at home, Jokesters is one of the number one, if not the number one club here in Las Vegas for comedy. It's on Fremont, am I correct? It is, at the D Hotel. Yes, and it is a place to go. I would just like, would love for all of you out there to join me at Jokesters. You have to come see this, because they're both on. Um, you're on, like, how many nights um, a week? It's, it's kind of our home club. It's our yes. our semi residency, if you will. So yes. I'm there a lot. Uh, we do a double headliner show. So it's either Kathleen and myself, yes. Derek Richards and Kathleen, a couple other guys, Rob Sherwood. There's some other guys in town awesome. that we pull in. Yes. Uh, Ten thirty. One thing we do, we love locals. So yes. locals are always fifteen bucks. We always get celebrities to pop in. Um, yes. Try to make it very local friendly, as we were talking about. Uh, George Wallace recently popped in. Yes. Worked out new material before his big show, and uh, wow. We always, people are always dropping in. Um, always a lot of great comics that are coming through Vegas, and they all say, "Hey, can I do a spot? Can I do?" And you're very particular. Who they got to be good comics. Yeah, we're. But we get those good comics that yeah. come through when we pop them in. And well, the best one. Spot. Yes. Yeah, no it's not, an, it's not an open mic night. No schmuckers. And that's the one thing. It's we we'd rather have top quality. Just yes. like it's a double headliner show. Where, oh, I love you know, it. There are other great shows in town, and uh, you know they're we're very supportive of each other. We don't step on each other's toes. We can all work at the same right. place. And, uh, people like Brad Garen have been very supportive. Hey, work your show. Just don't work them in the same week, so that way, you know, we rotate. Uh, and we have so many tours that come in. That's this so time. outstanding. Yeah, I, I would think that uh, Jokester would be a great place for tourists because uh, I mean, Street, everyone so. loves great comedians, and you yeah. know, you don't find uh, comedy places like this too much in Las Vegas. We're the only one downtown too. Yeah, full time, We're the seven only nights one downtown. a week. Oh my yeah. God, how no, now, not that? everyone likes comedy. There's always one knucklehead that's yeah. sitting in the front row going. <laughs> but mm. hey, he's there though, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> hey, if he's paying. He can not like the show. I don't. Yeah, care. as long as he's you know. he's enjoying. It. He just don't want to express. Yeah. Some that's, people, you know, that's some people, that's them having a ball. Yeah. Yeah. And then they come out and they go, hey, you were really funny. Really? Yeah, they'll do that. The show was great. I go, did it broke your face to smile? Yeah. They're or laughing clap inside. Or I had one guy, uh, his wife goes, oh, my husband never laughs. <laughs> Thank you for bringing him to a comedy show. Yeah, that's right. That that's right. That must be really weird. <laughs> Isn't it strange, like, when um, there's someone in the audience and you guys are putting on this great show and everyone's laughing and then there's this one person that's giving you that look? I'll usually yeah, go I sit do. on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't get him laughing. Me too. Me yes. too. That, that works. Or I show well. him naked pictures of Ron's wife. That's what I'll do. That'll get him laughing. <laughs> um, you got to do uh, something, right? Well, some people... The serious side of that is some people just really need to escape. Yes. Uh, you know, we've had some tough, tough weeks 
yes. uh, recently. And we did want to promote, we're doing a show, we're not trying to explain anything, but we'll show up. If people show up, we're going to do a show. Yes. And I've been through some of the worst times of my life and I've had to get on stage. And I understand people just want to get out yes. and laugh. So we're not requiring you to laugh out loud. Yes. Some people just may be having a tough time. They could after be. After the show, they come up and go, man, I just thank you so much. I needed to laugh. Yes. Uh, and even though they, they don't seem like they're having a great time. They, they are. are, yeah. Have you I ever gotten a movie on a Tuesday in the afternoon and there's no audience there? And you're yes. watching one of the funniest films and you go, eh. <laughs> then you go back on Friday night and everybody's laughing. Yes. So laughter is contagious. So yes, it is. We, yes, we try to make sure uh, you bring a friend. Yes. <laughs> wow. I, I think um, I really want to ch uh, ch know more about your um, the Jokesters Club because we, I mean, I think that's fascinating. But Kathleen, I'm going to go back to you. I want to find out about, really quick, um, before I go into this break, um, after you did your uh, talent show, tell me and tell my friends some of the shows that you had following that that led to where you are today. Uh, well, I moved to Las Vegas in 2002. I was doing, a, a, it's called a guest spot. When you perform at a comedy club, they don't pay you. They just let you do a little eight minute spot. And I did a spot at a old casino hotel called the Greek Isle. Mm -hmm. And um, there were about 15 people in the crowd. It wasn't a big crowd and didn't make any money. But the uh, head of the hotel, uh, Ron Garrett, saw me. And wow. he said, you know, you're so funny. You need to have a show here on a regular basis, not show up every once in a while. And he gave me my own show. When I moved to Las Vegas, I said, I give myself five years. I want to get my own show in Vegas. And it took me uh, seven months. Oh, my and gosh. And I got it. So I was at the Greek Isle for, yes. for about a year and a half. And then one day I was uh, touring around the country and I was in a car and I got a phone call and it was Ron Garrett again. He goes, how does this sound? The Divas of Comedy at the Sahara Hotel. I said, that sounds great. I don't know anybody that works at the Sahara Hotel. He goes, you do now. You're talking to the new entertainment director. Oh my God. And I'm bringing your show over to the Sahara Hotel. And that was huge for me. That was my big break in Las Vegas. Yeah. And I was there for three years. And then I just slowly got some recognition and then I got booked at um, the local clubs that were in the city. First the Comedy Stop, then the Riviera, and then, you know, Brad Garrett's and then Jokesters and a lot of other wow. clubs. This last year I had and four like, episodes on Laughs on Fox and I did a military tour wow. for you in May. I'm getting gigs that are actually great gigs And you're now. nonstop working. Yeah, I'm We're gonna continue working. this in a minute. I wanna take a break and we're gonna come back after this video. I want you to see some of these clips. We'll be right back. Tiffany, you're pretty Tiffany, 24 years old. Isn't that great? Well, Tiffany, you, you got everything going for you. You're very pretty. Everything's nice and tight and smooth. Everything's shiny, right where it's supposed to be. That's because you're 24, honey. But Tiffany, I, I got a little surprise for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's coming, Tiffany. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Had lunch with a girlfriend the other day. She goes, what's the problem with you? I says, well, I don't know what to eat. She goes, why don't you get that cake? That cake looks good. I says, oh, I've gained so much weight, I can't even look at a piece of cake without gaining 10 pounds. She goes, well, why don't you go look at a carrot? <laughs> Punch her. Yeah, you're awesome. 
You are amazing to me. You know, Kathleen, I want to ask you, when did you know that you had it in you? When did you discover you wanted to be a comedian? Well, I think I was a teenager when I really thought about that. Yes. Um, but I remember being in kindergarten. Oh. And, you know, the wow. teacher would have you sit in the floor in a circle. And I was always... Um, screwing around, being a naughty little kid. And, and I remember the teacher <laughs> yelling at me like this, and the flab of her arm oh, oh. was going like this. <laughs> and I could not, I was like hypnotized. I was like, oh my God. And then she said, did you hear what I just said? And I went, what? what? <laughs> and she said, what do you want to be when you grow up, a clown? And I was like, Oh, that would be awesome. Right. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh. You say that to a five-year-old kid? That was the coolest thing. So I went home and I told my mom and dad, I go, well, it's all figured out. I'm gonna be clown. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, what are you? Just go in your room and you know, clean your, your toys. I, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Awesome. But, but you know, I, I find that you always know it when you're a child. Like when you're that little, or normally when you're like in grade school, it's in you. Like you. I knew I wanted to do it, but you don't do that. Yes. You don't go up and become a That's all on the clown? Yeah, what guidance crazy? counselor list, doctor, An lawyer. Engineer, yeah, lawyer, secretary, clown. or a clown. Wow. And you check, clown. you know, with a big crayon, right? Right? All right, Kathleen, I have something for you. Since you <gasps> know you want to be a clown, do you want to do a little taste of your comedy right here? Well, the, the, thing, the thing about comedy <laughs> is you write what you know, right? Yes. Just like you write music, you yes. write songs. If someone were to say to you, I want you to write a song about this, you'd be saying, yes. oh, I, I know I know what to write about. Don't be telling me what to write about. I just write what I know, and a lot of what I know yes. is that I'm getting old and I'm getting fat. And you don't know anything <laughs> about either one of them, and frankly, kind of piss me off. But, uh, <laughs> I talk about the struggle of losing weight, I actually had a girlfriend give me some advice. All these showgirls and beautiful skinny um, uh, women all over Vegas, everybody's always got advice. And I've learned yes. one thing, don't take advice how to lose weight from a fat person. I'm sorry, an overweight person. That's a bad idea. That's the correct term. But I had one girlfriend told me what she would suggest I do is get a picture of a very skinny, pretty girl and put it on the refrigerator. Oh. And then every time you go to the refrigerator to get food, you look at that skinny picture and you won't eat. So I did. Wow. So I, did, I got work? a skinny, pretty picture, put it on the refrigerator, and I was hungry. So I walked up and I ate the damn picture. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm fat and a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> And I see you doing that too. <laughs> it wasn't very good, but I was hungry. Do you have a little fiber? A little fiber in the diet? Thank you. She is so amazing. You guys, of course, you see the clips. I would suggest you have to check out her live in action. Now, I'm going to go to you. Okay. Hello. You, Don. You, you, you. you. That's me, yes. Now, Don. Glad you, you did your hair. Have yeah. So much to your resume. You've been in the entertainment business since you, you grew up in it. Your, your father yeah. was in it. Yeah. Uh, you know, your dad was someone who produced the right Yeah, he was a director. Uh, the big th he worked on the Donnie Marie show, the Sonny and Cher show. The big one was Mork and Mindy. So at 16, instead of going to football games, I would hang out on the set at Paramount and watch Robin do what he does. And I was just uh, blown away. Wow, you make a living making people laugh? And then Jonathan Winters came in and and it just it blew my mind. I had no idea um, that I would ever be a comic. Um, I went to join the military when I was 18, but they were closed. <laughs> <laughs> Not the military, the, the, the recruiter was closed. Oh, the I recruiter. was going to say, I he's little, coming, <laughs> shut the door, <laughs> shut the door, here he comes. I had a little glaucoma problem at the time, and uh, as I skateboarded home from the recruiting office, 
don't judge. This is our time. <laughs> We're not judging. And uh, right. I got a job at a comedy club down in Hermosa Beach. I always swore I'd do something for the troops. Mm. And uh, I was the doorman. I managed the club. I became the house MC. Wow. Back in the day, uh, Dana Carvey, Jay Leno, Seinfeld, Gary Shandling, they were all just kind of starting to boom in the early 80s. And uh, Leno said, if you want to be a comic, eh, you got to go on the road. So I quit my job and uh, I started doing stand-up full time. And wow. we started doing stuff for the troops mm -hmm. since uh, 1992. I've been performing and producing comedy shows for the military. And Kathleen just went out and did her first tour. And May was great. It was awesome. awesome. Yeah. And, and, uh, and you're also an author. I am. Uh, book. I've written a couple books uh, on comedy. Uh, I teach stand-up comedy. I went to Second City. I teach improv here in town as well at the Las Vegas Comedy Institute. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I perform nightly. And I get to work with people like Kathleen and yes. some of these other amazing comics. And, wow. And you've appeared right. on many television shows. You were on MTV, CBS, NBC, Fox, a couple. ABC. Yeah. I was, uh, oh, I was so on Apollo 13. Cool. Oh, you know, sure <laughs> you know, one of the ground control Big guys. Shots. Yeah. <laughs> You're six degrees from Kevin Bacon now. You're two degrees now. Wow. If you want to play the game. Kevin Bacon. Yeah. I'm so fat, all I care about is the bacon. The bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody else hungry now? I think you're beautiful. Oh, I love you. you I'm gonna give you a dollar. And, and we, women are you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. I don't find you. Oh, I love you. Yeah. I'm giving you. A, she's you're getting a dollar. You you're don't beautiful. get anything. You're stunning. You, you're thin. You just have you lost oh. weight? Have you lost weight? Oh my yeah. God! How much money? Is you that? want a pony? I'll give you a pony if you tell me I lost weight. <laughs> you do. You look like you lost oh weight. Oh my I God! See, I see it in the face more. Oh my God! I love you. Know. you. I'm just saying. How much money is that? You do improv, right? Yes, I did so, improv. Uh, we were asked, uh, uh, Ron was asking us if we do something together on stage. That's a whole thing in Amsterdam. We can't go there. However, <laughs> we uh, I'm an improv person, Kathleen is. So what we've been talking to uh, one of our partners is about doing a stand-up and improv show one night, like on a Monday oh night. Oh my gosh, that would be to do us. That would be fun. Yeah, Pick on a couple of the games. And, yeah. That would be it's so sort of a whose line is it anyway? So you yes. can check that out, Jokesters. LasVegas.com, I think, is the website. Because yes. uh, that's something that we'd, that we'd love to get Kathleen on stage. You know, I did improv for two years before I did stand up. So, yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh my God, we didn't talk to me about that. We'll talk after We're the, just breaking yeah. it out here. Inside, yeah, so inside I don't want to throw it. I, I, I wanted to su surprise you. Oh my uh, you God. Know. Because you've lost weight, so I wanted to make sure that you... Oh, you know. So now I can be the Q-tip. <laughs> You're a Q-tip. You're damn right I am. Just see what I'm dealing with today. This is outstanding, and I love, love sitting here with comedians and um, especially you two. Well, you're so oh. pretty. Could you be more pretty? Not Could she I be know. more pretty? <laughs> you are just... How many Golda Mays died for that dress? That is just know. stunning. <laughs> and look at, she's just, and you are the only girl I know that blings out more than I do. God oh bless you, you're my hero. I'm a blinger. Oh, I don't you love it? Yes. It's, you know, you gotta have like sparkles in Vegas yes. and right? Right. Look at you, you shine all over the place. She's making me blush, so we'll be right back after this. A married couple, totally different story. You spot a married man at 50 paces, because he's the guy slumped in his chair, his spine has been sucked out of his brain. Oh yeah, one vertebra for every year he's done his time. Dude, look at you, man, you're bent over, come on. I think being in love is awesome, that's the greatest drug in the world, but as a man, we just don't get it. We don't. A woman says, I love you. That's like catching a deer in the headlights. A woman goes, I love you. I love you. Click. Mongo like fire. You can't make a decision when you first fall in love. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I just want to be with you. Well, I want to be. So, Don, I'm back on you. Oh, oh, okay. You know, oh. it's me and you right here. You know, right? right. Here, Don. Look in my eyes. You are amazing. And. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> but you are, and 
Thank you. I know you do a lot of writing, and I also see you have a book of number one self workout. Yeah. And I want to know what inspires you. Where do you get your material from? What inspires uh, you to write? I, I think like every comic, it's just we're just talking about our life, the problems we go through, um, yeah. uh, every day to day stuff. My, uh, I grew up trailer trash. Uh, <laughs> you know, you get TT in the house. What's up? What's up? That's a double wide. That's a double wide. <laughs> That means he's got a dryer Ooh. <laughs> inside the house. Ooh. Um, uh, that, that was true. It's not a joke. It's actually true. I had four older sisters. Uh, they used to dress me up and make me dance with them. Um, so I used to get beat up for wearing kulaks to school. Uh, and now I talk about it. Um, I was only boy in dance class, so people would tease me. Oh, what are you, you know, queer taking dance? Like, Dude, there are 40 girls in spandex and me. There are 320 guys on the football team. Who's in the closet now? That's you know, right. um, My dad was a DJ originally. Uh, we talked to Ron about that a little bit. Uh, one night, this lady called the radio station. They go out, had a few drinks. She got pregnant, and here I am. Wow. My mom was the fourth caller. <laughs> I'm wow, not, I swear, I'm hysterical. not making that joke up. I crossed my heart. That's, the fourth caller. Yeah. I was married once before. That didn't work out. I realized we were having problems when my wife started dating again. Oh, she started dating again. Oh, that doesn't <laughs> help. You laugh like you know her. Really? A phone call? Something? A tip? Somebody owes me a set of tools. You guys on the cameras laugh a little too hard at that joke. Really? Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, oh, my wife started dating again. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just, that's just part of life, what we do, yeah. um, and, and it's it's all about uh, <laughs> common sense. You, you're, it's out of your life. Yeah. Kathleen talks, it's just day-to-day -day stuff. Yes. And someone once said, just open up your heart and rip out, your pain is funny. Pain plus time equals fun. So yes. no matter how bad a situation is, if you wait long enough, there's something to look back and laugh on. Just sometimes you got to wait a while for the humor truck to get back to your neighborhood. Yes, right. And you know, you tell these stories that everyone can relate to, or know someone that can relate to. That's what's so wonderful about comedy. It's like some of the comedy I noticed that are, it's, it's, it, it stems from issues in, in one's life. Yeah. And it, it's so um, fascinating to make this into laughter. We all need that. And we all, we're all humans. We all relate at some point. And it's what comics, we say what everybody thinks about. So yes. we're missing the chip or the filter. So yes. you wouldn't probably say most of what we say in public, you get slapped. But on stage at a comedy venue, there's a certain expectation to let loose. And the other day I went to the ATM drive through and I'm in a hurry and I'm going there and I noticed they have all these bumps by the card reader. There's Braille on the drive through ATM. We're taking political correctness a little bit, encouraging people that maybe shouldn't be, oh, you can do anything in America. No, if you're blind, you probably shouldn't be driving. Nothing against blind people. I support all people with disabilities. However. But how does he even know he's out of money? <laughs> That's the tag and the joke and that, right? Because he can read his thing, but he can't see the sign to say how much you have in your balance. I gotta put in three dollars in order to get twenty out. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Is the fee okay? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, how do you know you? How do you know there's no money in your wallet? You can't see it. He's got his cane out the window. Da, da, da. Sorry, guys. I can actually go all day with you. I want you guys to come back and see me. Be happy to We'd love to. Thank so you. So we can continue because it's not enough time in the show for us or maybe to do you this. Come sing a song when we're doing our show. Yes, yes. I can come oh, sing with sing. you. But <laughs> I want to thank you. I want to thank my guests, Kathleen and Don, two of the best comedians in this city. And please be sure to see them live. All the information is here on the screen. And thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Thank you, Gorgeous. Thank you so much.